Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, everyone? I hope that your days are good and uh, your life is uh, excelling. Uh, you are excelling in your life on different levels. Today, you are talking about a new subject called why you became successful. I've been away for about two, three weeks, uh, or at least three weeks. We've been traveling between Iraq and uh, Libya and uh, Turkey. Uh, that's why I wasn't uh, with you uh, since uh, before Christmas. I was in Arbil in uh, Kurdistan, Iraq, and I posted something on my Facebook about uh, the team in Baghdad and, and the team in Arbil. And this discussion happened on my Facebook page about the authenticity and the transparency of Islamic belief. Authenticity and transparency of Islamic belief, and this discussion was very heated, very good, very healthy between different people from different countries. I enjoyed listening to the positive criticism and the right of anybody to ask you about what you do in your public domain. That's why I decided today to, and yesterday in Arabic, today in English, to talk about how we became successful. Oh, sorry. First of all, when we talk about uh, uh, an organization like Islamic Relief and we look at it is a uh, path over the last 34 years. Ah, by the way, today is the 34th anniversary of Islamic Relief or this day is 17 January. It is the birthday of Islamic Relief was 17 January 1984, Tuesday, half past five in the evening. Come and meet me there. Okay, let's go back with the time machine to meet together in Birmingham. First point of success is the timing and political climate. If you look back at the 80s and the 90s of the last century, you found the anti, the anti philosophy, which is Islamophobia, anti Islam, anti civil society sector, anti, anti, anti was not as bad as we are seeing it nowadays. That's why the timing in the 80s allowed Islamic Leaf to grow very fast. So at the right time, as well as the political atmosphere, the political atmosphere was accommodating, accommodating, not uh, uh, excluding community, particularly the immigrant community uh, who were living in the West. Uh, the issue of counter-terrorism and the counter-extremism and the counter-radicalism was not there, or even if it was, it was on a very minimum level. So the timing in the 80s was good, sun was shining, it was spring-like, everybody was accommodating everybody else, and the political climate was good as well. Second point is the geographical location, of course, of course, and the country of origin, of course. We are here in a country called itself Great Britain, in a country calling itself the, the mother of democracy, in a country calling itself the, the empire that the sun does not set on its boundaries, and it builds an institution. It built in the state long time ago. There's no who can track you to criminalize or to defend anybody. The institution and the establishment, solid, sound, as well as there's a political power. So when you are in a country like this, the, the climate, the social climate, the civil society climate will allow you to grow. When you are in different countries who are depending, the state depending on an individual or an ideological background or an a family or on a military gender, yani military personality or security personality, we will never grow. You will never grow. You'll be disabled. Maybe paralyzed. That's why we look about the country of origin. 
and the second one is the geographical location. Clarity of vision. At that time, there was a famine in Africa, in East Africa, in, uh, in Eritrea and Tigray, in Ethiopia at that time. And hundreds of thousands of people were walking around, so our vision was to help people, to have any humanitarian response. To help such people, they need help. We knew what we want to do. Help, help, help. The poor, the poor, the poor in Africa and Africa and Africa. As simple as this. No complication. When you have a very complicated vision, you go nowhere with it. You will have color blindness. When you have too many objectives, you will grow thin. And you might not be able to grow high. That's for the clarity of vision. Rely on grassroots. I was a medical student doing my doctor of medicine, MD, which is PhD, in the University of Birmingham with my colleague, Dr. Shabib, who was doing his PhD in, in, in chemistry. There was no big names. There was no millionaire or billionaires or prince or princesses or whatever you call them. No. Big no with capital N and capital O. All right? So we were relying heavily on the grassroots. Walking from uh, street to street, from a house to house, from a shop to shop, from supermarket to supermarket, from uh, mosque to mosque, from community center to community center, from a conference to a conference, from anywhere to anywhere else. Okay? This is how we started. And this is how we grew from bottom up. Listen, if you tell me start again, I will do what I done in 1984. Grassroots. 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 Being focused on the first stage of foundation, the first five years, from 84 to 89 or 90, we were in the country, covering UK, from border to border. During Ramadan, I used to travel in a car called the Caravan Tour, where we all go to go and distribute the leaflets, visit the mosques, stay overnight, being with the community, delivering the speeches, about the need and interacting with everybody. We used to leave one day before Ramadan and come on the 27th and 28th of Ramadan back to Birmingham. We started with a small car, huh? then it became two vans, then it became three vans, to the north, to the south, to the east, and to the west. Focused, focused in UK. In UK. A farmer who does not stay on the land day and night at the time of planting the seeds and seeing the vegetation growing, his crops will be eaten by the birds or the insects or the animals. Focused. Then volunteering. Absolutely the most important and valuable contribution was for the secondary school pupils or students, and the university students. Where we used to operate in a place called in, uh, 517 Mosley Road, it's the Muslim student house. We used to have secondary school students, boys and girls, sitting on the floor, sticking the, uh, uh, filling the envelopes with leaflets, sticking the addresses with a sponge, sealing the envelope till after midnight. And everybody was enjoying it. You know, the only reward was what? Ships. And if we have some more money, we give them one kebab or a small piece of fish. For the rewardable effort, the manual effort they were doing. Volunteering, volunteering, volunteering. Was actually the, 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 the driving spirit of the 80s of Islamic 
relief at that time. Clear? So, being focused in the country of origin, volunteering is number two. Sorry, which one is this? It's not uh, working. Oh. Relationship between the board of trustees and the executive. It was an excellent working relationship. The board of trustees was the governing body, have full trust in the executive, especially the founding member who was there chairing the executives or leading the executives. This kind of relationship is extremely valuable to take the organization from A to Z and to let the organization to grow from bottom up to the level of excellence. If we start to have very narrow space or to start to lose the space or start to have doubt in the executives, organization not grow, but fall down. That's an excellent relationship between us. Then in the executives, the founder, the CEO, and the structure. The executives who build the executives from the 90s onward. Because from the 84 to 89 or 90, we're actually relying heavily on volunteers. Then we started with the founder, was myself, and Dr. Hassan Shabib, to look up at the structure of the organization. The first time we managed to draw the monogram of the organization was in 1991, when we had the so-called uh, managing director, and underneath him was the uh, uh, personnel, which is the admin department, admin division, fundraising division, program division, and finance. This is the first time 27 years ago to have this monogram. Okay? The monogram of the structure. Then actually we started to employ people full time from the 90s onward in these different uh, uh, departments. Okay? So the teamwork, the building up of the uh, executives and the structure started there. Priority. We were in lo we were and we're still in Europe. Okay, we were and we're still in Europe, and we were and we're still in Europe, and we have to look at different countries. We were focusing at that time at fundraising countries. So when I was on the airplane, I used to look at the world map and make a circle around the cities that we want to, board, to open offices in it, in different parts of the world. In America, in Europe, in uh, East uh, uh, Africa, West Africa, uh, in Central Asian Republic, and so on, so on, so on, so on, East Europe, and so on, so on, so on. So, on. so we used to draw these uh, uh, circles around the uh, cities and alhamdulillah we started with offices in America, USA, offices in Canada, offices in Europe and so on, so on, so on, so on. This is how we started effectively to focus on what? On the fundraising offices uh, in Europe and America. That's why uh, the, the diversity of the fundraising uh, uh, operation of Islamic Relief is different. And here we can give an advice to the organization who is growing in a rich country. If they rely only on one source of income, it becomes very dangerous. I kept saying this to organization 
from the Middle East, then you have to diversify your fundraising capability from your country and from other countries as well. And that's why choosing the countries at the time gave the strength of Islamic Relief of having different income from different parts of the world. Choosing the representative of Islamic Relief, of course, we have to choose the most active individual. I'm very proud of this. I was making the choice, somebody who has got the Islamic spirit, and somebody who is capable and able to drive the community with all the criteria active to drive the community. So what's the problem? Regardless of his or her background from different groups they belong to. Here we can look at the most active individual in Europe and America who chose them to join Islamic Leaf at the early 90s. When was that? 25 years ago. Right? So choosing the country of, 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 of fundraising countries, then choosing the representative in different offices. We tried the use effectively. As I said, volunteering and the grassroots were cornerstone of building this organization in 1984 and onward. And mainly, those people were young men and women. We started the Islamic Leaf Games in 1989. It was a dream for the youth. We used to travel from as far as Southampton in the south, Aberdeen in the north, uh, Norwich in the east, Wales in the west, east and west, yes, okay? And even the youth used to come from Germany, France, Belgium, and Holland to play football. So we utilize the youth effectively. As I said, secondary school, even federation, uh, uh, even forces, uh, uh, students, Islamic societies in the country, in the universities, were joining us. Undergraduate and postgraduate and secondary school youth. So the, any organization who would love to build it is mission, spread, it is message, produce, it is products, has to rely heavily on the youth beside the wise men and women in the organization. If you drop youth out, you yourself become a dead meat, not an organization. Swift disaster response. We were in, 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 in the West, or in Europe, or in America, or in England. We were the first to, support, to respond to any disaster. Let me take you some time to different areas of, of, of actually uh, confusion, which could let people to respond to. Iran earthquake in the 1991. People were thinking about the issue of Sunnah Shia, Shia, Sunnah of Imam Khomeini, whatever I could, the, or, or the different schools of thoughts in different uh, uh, Arab countries and Muslim countries and uh, Iran, we had nothing to do with all these theological differences. We were the first, even before the Shia uh, Husseiniyat and mosques at that time. And within two to three weeks, we managed to raise more than 250,000 250, quarter million dollars a quarter million pound at the time, and we send all this aid material with the Iranian Red Crescent. This is, at that time, Sudan flood, at the as same as a year before 1989, uh, Bangladesh flood, 1991, and so, and after that, Bosnia, uh, 1992. We were the first swept. That's why we had a niche. People were waiting to see the leaflet of the organization in the front door of every mosque or in the front door of every house that actually we were putting the uh, leaflet through the door box. Right? Operating in dangerous zones. Yes, we did. 
That's why we deserve to be one of the best, if not the best. One of the leading, if not the leading. You know why? Because we went to Chechnya and we came back alive. We went to Bosnia and we came back alive. We went to Afghanistan and we came back alive. We went to Kosovo and we came back alive. And we're still carrying on the same mission, the same mission, the same mission. Because it's a mission, it's not a job. It's a message to be delivered. It is not a speech to be spoken about. Dangerous area. But good people, extremely dedicated for this. I can mention some of the names of those people who could risk their life in this area. Somebody like Mustafa Osman, who used to be the head of emergency. Somebody like Hishmat Khalifa, who used to work in Bosnia, and Lotfi Said as well. Someone like Sakandar Ali. Sakandar Ali and Mustafa Osman were in Chechnya in January 1995. Come and meet me there. If you want to talk about history. Who are you? To start to doubt the credibility of the people who stood in the snow in the middle of the shoot to kill policy in this area, tsunami. We were there before New Year's of, two, of, of, of 2005. I've got a Pakistan earthquake, Pakistan flood, and so, 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 and so. Dangerous area? Yes. Dangerous zone? Yes. So what? Only people, the bad ones only attack the successful organizations. Transparency and no, and no mixing of cars. At that time we used to have a lot of discussion with some organization from the East. Calling us names because we work with everybody and anybody. You see you drop your dean, you drop your Values, I said, okay, fine. Humanitarian work has nothing to do with what you are talking about. We're not going to politicize it or to let it to get out of its context. It has to be delivered in its context. That's why those organizations, those individuals who are talking about this in the 80s and 90s don't exist nowadays. Whether it's in Europe or in America or in the Middle East. And we still exist. Today and tomorrow. Because we have the straight line. One of the most and important departments that we build inside Islamic Leaf in the, in the structure. I mentioned here about the structure. Here, you see this structure. Was two departments. Finance and program. We know what we are talking about. But this was when? This was in the 90s, not nowadays. We're highly qualified accountants were employed by Islamic Leaf. So when we come back, no mixing of cards. You have no right to do any simple mistake with a good intention in a conflict zone. This was in the 90s, not in the 2018. Following the humanitarian principles, the seven principles that we knew about them, independence, transparency, humanity, volunteering, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, impartiality, okay, and so on. We were following them. During the war in Bosnia, the war in Chechnya, and different parts of the world. Inclusivity and so on, so on, so on, so on. Come back, I'm, ah, sorry, I, I mentioned it earlier on. Building a strong internal uh, structure within, with a focus on finance, as I mentioned before, as well as program. This happened in 1991, 1992, when we had, we have to focus on finance. The killer of any organization is finance. That's why banking, security, 
counter extremism and terrorism. Others come to look at how ma, how did you raise your fund and how did you spend your fund. This happened in the early 90s. Focus on finance and the program. The program in Afghanistan, how do you spend the money there? Who is the end user of your money? The program in South Sudan, the program in Darfur, the program in Niger, the program in Haiti, the program in China, the program in Yemen, the program in Indonesia, the program in Pakistan, the program in Chechnya, and so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. They have to have very highly qualified people to do that. Open door policy, internal and external. The first employee who came to Islamic Leaf was in the late 80s or early 90s as a non-Muslim to work. And now there's a mosaic of different culture, different religion, different ethnicity, and so on, so on, so on, so on. To be very honest, I observed a lot of Muslim charitable organization or humanitarian organization and found that the diversity in their employee is more diverse than the diversity in the non-faith-based organization. But we always attack what's called Muslim faith-based humanitarian organization. And externally, we used to go and attend all the meeting, humanitarian meeting organized by United Nations, by uh, European Union, by others, to learn, to listen, to learn, comprehend, then start speaking. And I started this myself, to be one of the first few in the early 90s, 1992, 1991. Not now, not now. When the sun was shining and the climate was good and the political atmosphere was accommodating and conducive. Joining Ontario Ontario this, this happened in 1993 when Islamic Relief joined ECOSOC of United Nations. Economic and Social Department, ECOSOC, Economic and Social uh, Committee there for the, uh, for the non-government organization. This is 1993, February 1993, or March 1993. Then the European Union, we joined, you know when we joined it in the European Union, and uh, not European Union, ECO of European Union? September 2001. September 2001, and we signed the agreement in of April, May 2002. This is a process of an organization which started at the right place, at the right time, with the right people, doing the right thing, and focusing on the delivery. You have the right to ask, even if you doubt. But you don't have the right to doubt even if you listen to the answers. And this is a, this is a challenge. If you have got any question to ask, like the brothers who are actually discussing this issue on my Facebook page uh, two weeks ago, while I was in Arbil, yes, they have the right to ask any difficult question. My name is Hani, that's my name. My father is Abdul Jawad, that's my father's name. My grandfather is Al Sayyid, Okay, and he's buried in Al Madina, Al Baqiya. And my great grandfather is Mustafa, who's buried in Egypt. And my great 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 grandfather is Hamuda, and the family name is Al Banna. Is it clear for you, brothers and sisters? So don't play games with my name or on my name. I'm very proud of what I am, and we are very proud of what Islamic Relief and other Islamic charitable organizations are. Because they are more diverse, more transparent than many organizations that we cover up for them. May Allah bless you, inshaAllah. Jazakum Allah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.